Welcome back to Nara Fishing, everybody. And today we are going to be continuing our um, our testing of that ESZ rod. If you watched a previous video I did on that rod, I kept saying ESV. I I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm always comparing that, you know, but you know, with the Bible, the ESV version, and I think of that when I read it. And I, every time I want to say, I say ESV, and I know it's ESZ. So. If you're going to check out their website, it's ESZ. I was about to say it again, not ESV. Uh, but yeah, so far I'm enjoying the rod. Um, we're gonna try it again today. We're gonna take it to the industrial pond and all I have is one little fly box of some flies that I bought, not ones that I made, that are very small flies. Um, I have a couple I wanna start with. I'm hoping to do a little top water this morning because it's earlier than I normally go fishing because it's gonna be really hot today and very humid. So I'm, I got up, well, I woke up early. I didn't get up early, but I woke up at 5.30. So I was like, well, let's go fishing. So right now it's probably like 6, 6.15 maybe, 6.20ish maybe, it might be 6.30. We'll know when it's 6.30 because my alarm will go off. I'm hoping we'll be at the pond at 6.30. Uh, normally I don't even wake up and get my stuff together until seven. Ooh, this is nice, there's not a single uh, car on the road. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a pond right here by my house, by the school, but I don't know if I'm allowed to fish it, and there's been a lot of geese around it lately, so I haven't tried it yet. Um, there's also a pond in my neighborhood. I did fish it off camera. I caught like two or three little bass and one or two little bluegill using the minnow pattern that we've been using recently. And uh, uh, so, that's a cool car. Um, it's like an old should have got it on camera but uh but yeah so i've been i fished that i've lost my train of thought um yeah we're gonna go fish in the industrial pond hopefully we can get some bluegills i want to start with like a small top water fly i have a tiny top water fly i don't want to start with that unless the gills are just completely turned off and then i'll target the little baby bluegill um, the main reason why I want to target bluegill is one, I want to see how this casts a dry fly. Um, I do know the leader on it right now is kind of short from where we were fishing that other pond. Um, I may lengthen that up, but I also might leave it short because sometimes when you're fishing for gills, it's more fun to have a shorter leader because they pull harder. It feels like you got bigger fish. Um, and so yeah, that, that's the goal for today. Uh, if they don't go after the dry flies, I have a couple other ones that are smaller that are just sur subsurface flies. And if we wanted to, and if we had time, I do have one olive marabou minnow with us. And that's what's currently tied onto the rod. So what I might do is I might just cut the entire leader off, like right at the loop and then retie on a new leader for the gill. And then if the fishing goes pretty good and we have time, just go back and swap the leader out. And then we'll have a marabou minnow on a shorter line, which I don't want to fish on a shorter line. So maybe I won't do that. Um, anyway, I've been rambling for almost four minutes now. So, and I'm already halfway there. So I will uh, meet you guys at the water. Oh yeah guys, by the way, while I'm sitting at the stoplight, that reminds me, last video, if y'all remember, if you look at the beginning when I did the unboxing, there was that gray like T thing, and I was like, what is this? I don't know what this is for. Um, I figured out what it was when I got home. So what it is, is it's a clip for you to stick on the rod so that the line spool that comes with it, the little blue one, it sits on that and it keeps it from falling off. So it's a, it's, it's a mount for your line spool that connects onto the rod. So, yeah, I'm just an idiot. That's all that was. But, uh, but yeah, and, I, and, I, and when I clipped it on, it sticks pretty good. So, it, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. So, if that's something you're interested in, you know, it, it's, it's there as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll meet y'all at the water. All right, guys, we have made it to the spot. It is, like, super clear, super quiet, no wind. Which is very rare when I get to go fishing. Um, 
I can't help myself. I'm gonna start with this marabou minnow on this side. Um, I just spooked a turtle. Um, now one thing I do also wanna check is, because this fly, I mean this rod is a little bit longer than the roto that I normally fish here, I do wonder if it's going to cause that power line, which has gotten me shocked using other types of rod. Now, I think it's gonna depend on what this rod is made of. They have it listed on their website what it is, and to be totally honest, I am too lazy to get on my phone right now to read it out to y'all, um, because I really wanna get a hook in the water, and because, well, I see some gills already. See two little gills sitting in front of the, that's a baby bass. That was a bunch of little gills, okay. Well, they're all over here by this culvert, which is not unusual. There's a bunch of gill in here this morning. Okay, cool, cool, cool. There's actually one flopping around on the shore. I wonder if I can grab him by hand. I'm gonna try to get down there. I don't wanna spook every fish. I see like one, two, three, four, five, six little like four inch bluegill right there on the bank from us. I'm trying to get down somewhat slowly to not spook them. Um, they're fighting each other. But I'm trying to make my way down here to these rocks so we can get a little bit further out. Um, and then the goal would be try to catch a bass and then we'll probably switch to more bluegill appropriate flies because that is the goal for today but like I said I just can't help it you give me an opportunity to try to catch a bluegill and bass I'm going to try to catch a bass they're just so fun to catch and they're a lot of fun on this oop scared a turtle again there's a little baby bass Let's see if anything's even interested in it I definitely need a longer leader. This leader is very short. Little bass. Oh, we lost him. But I, I did see two other ones near us. So that's a good sign. Not a good sign that I lost him. But it's a good sign that he bit the hook that fast. Felt like a gill. All right, guys, these are the flies that I have with me. Now, we could go with these kind of like caddis flies. I'm thinking they might work pretty good this morning. Um, they might also be big enough to hook a bass because they do have a somewhat larger hook. Um, then again, these would probably work really good but I think we're gonna go with these because I want to try to get something on these caddis flies now like I said I did not tie these I bought these from a sportsman's warehouse here in Wilmington um, if we had, had if we had a windier day I probably wouldn't have chosen this one because I know this is gonna um, drag a bit on the cast but also man that would explain it it's like i can't get the the line through the eyelet it's because there's already some line in there i may have gotten it out i'm not sure But, um, all right, guys, before we make our next cast, we need to pray. We completely forgot when we got here in the excitement of things. And, uh, let's just go ahead and do that. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything you've given us. And we just pray that you may, you know, protect us and have your hand on us as we fish today, and that we may, you know, do things today that honor you and bring us closer to you. and 
We pray that for people out there who are infirm and need your help, that you just put your hand out and help them. And for those of people who don't know you, may they please, may they hopefully come to understand your, your love and the glory that is, you know, being a follower of you. And I just pray that we may just continue to be closer to you and do the right thing. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Now, what I tied on is that elk hair caddis. I think it's elk hair. It's probably deer hair. But um, the only thing that I'm worried about is when I tied it on, I did too many wraps, so I frayed the line a little bit. Um, we're just targeting bluegill, and this is five pound test, and we probably only need three. So hopefully it's not gonna make too much of a difference. And we're just gonna let that sit out there. Just give it a few taps every now and again. Hopefully we're going to get us some bluegill. I have a feeling we would have done better if we had casted more towards... Oh! Missed him. I saw the turtle going after it and I got nervous. He's still going after it. Kind of annoying. I saw the turtle going after it and I saw the splash and I set the hook too early. I should have waited. that sit just the hook but we had a nice pop there we go come on mr. Gill yeah come see me ouch yep this rod will for sure shock me here it's kind of a bummer it's not a real big gill but Still a lot of fun. Alrighty. Dude, can you please not do that? I just want you, I don't want all the grass. Alright. the world. <sighs> there we go guys. Very pretty bluegill. Not very big, but definitely fun to catch. We're going to let him go. Right over here in this culvert. And I'm going to get all this grass off my line. Which shouldn't affect too much. Especially when you're just catching little guys like this. Oh, you just had to be sassy a little bit, huh? There we go, guys. Another little gill. This fly we're using is no longer sitting on the surface, which is, it's, it's slowly sinking. Which is okay. I 
I'm not sure if we already got a hit or... You're indeed getting a hit. We're just gonna kinda... There we go. Another nice kill. Bring him around this little branch here. Ooh, he's got some pretty blues on him. You're living up to the name Bluegill, aren't you there, bud? Trying not to get finned. Oh, thanks for peeing on me. All right. Open your mouth. Another very pretty gill. We're gonna let him go as well. Alright guys, we've walked all the way to the end. Um, believe it or not, we've only been fishing for 20, 30 minutes maybe, maybe 40 minutes. And my GoPro's already overheating. And we're not even in the sun yet. We're just out here recording. And it's already like, it's hot, I'm dying. So, <laughs> I don't know exactly how this is going to go for the rest of the trip. Look at that, it sucks. My spot normally where I stand where those rocks are, it's wet. I'm trying to get close without spooking everything. Go ahead and set my water jug down. Scooch on down here. Hello. Nothing in the pipe. Cool. All right, we're gonna do a couple casts. Just kind of right in front of us before we walk all the way out there to see if there's any. Activity here. Why is it sketchy when you hear noises coming from inside of a culvert? But it's fine, we're fine, everything's fine. Okay, so nothing there, so let's get the fishing. Hmm, I see a bass. Not what I'm after. Oh, come on now. That's not what I wanted to be doing right now. And there goes the line. Oh, look at that mess. Something I don't like about fishing with lighter line is you have issues like that. That's why I normally don't go any lower than eight pound test. I'm gonna change this fly out and we'll get back to it. All right guys, we're gonna switch to this little nymph. And because our line snapped in the middle, it's a little bit shorter. We only have like maybe a foot and a half, two feet. It will, but this corner is really deep. So, you know, we can fish the bottom now with this heavier fly. Hopefully, it'll work out pretty good. There we go. Easy, bud. Easy. You're just all spinny spinny. I 
little guys. Very pretty little bluegill. We're gonna let him go as well. And he's gone. I'm almost tempted to change out this line again and put the minnow back on. Since the sun's coming up, we're swiftly approaching the end of our fishing time because of reasons. I'm fishing this a bit faster because it's heavier. And I want to be able to get it to keep the tension on the line. Kind of let it swing versus drag. Well, I think that answers our question of whether or not we should switch to the other fly or not. Now, I don't know if we got our fly back or if it's gone. If it's gone, I'm not going to be that mad. Yep, it's all gone. All right, let's retie on the, the, the marabou minnow. And uh, let's target a few bass if we can. All right, what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna work our way around the pond, just going around the circle. And hopefully, find a bass. Now we probably could go back the way we came and have really good results, but the sun's in my face and I wanna go this way. So, Am I recording? Yes. Feels like a nice size bass, guys. Oh! Didn't keep enough pressure on him. That was kind of my fault. I walked down the bank to get a better angle and the swirls he left. It's kind of frustrating, really. That was a nice bass. Or a very, very big bluegill. That was a bluegill. Now that fish we just had, I probably could have been a little bit more aggressive with the fighting of him, but I just don't trust this line. Last time I came out here, I didn't trust the rod because it was new, but I'm getting a better feel for it. I'm trusting the rod a bit more, but I don't trust this line. I would really prefer to have heavier line when I'm bass fishing. I mean, five pound is, isn't really that light, but oop, that was a nice hit. Bluegill's tapping at it. I can always tell when it's a gill by the way they really knock it. It's not so much of a a big pull, it's just a sharp thump. And you gotta remember too, a lot of times when these things say three pound, five pound test, they're implying five pound test with drag. I don't have a drag. My drag is, oh crap, this fish is too big. So, 
That is another difference that you always have to take into consideration when you're fishing for anything larger than what you would think that your rod could handle. Is you want to be sure that your line breaks before your rod, but you want to be right at the maximum you can have, especially if you're targeting bass. Unless you know exactly what size they're going to be in the pond you're fishing. Generally, I would say aim big, way bigger than you'd think. Now, what I'm doing here at the five pound, probably I would recommend if you're new to go with a little bit lighter line because if you do get a bigger fish and you're not quite sure how to fight it yet, your line breaking can save your rod. But once you've learned a little bit and you want to get the bigger fish on the rod and you figured out how to fight them and you know angles that if you absolutely know, okay, this fish is just too big, you know exactly how to break your line. Which can be hard to remember in the heat of the moment. Look at that tiny little bluegill. He is like an inch long chasing this. Cute little guy though. Big old bluegill. Look at the curve of the rod, guys. Come here, bud. Oh, come here. So we're gonna face this way in case we, the dragonfly gets eaten. Another looking shellcracker kind of guy. Look at him snapping. Angry boy, angry, angry. Maybe red ear, not sure. Just got a little bit of red. Very pretty. Um, I may have to toss you a bit, bud, because I don't want to fall in the water. It's really slippery right now. We gonna try. There you go, bud. Enjoy your day. All right. Catch those guys all day long. They're fun. Oh. We got a fish. Didn't even feel him bite which makes me nervous and happy. Makes me nervous because I don't know how good the hook set is. Makes me happy because he's a nice sized bass and I don't want to break him off this hook. All right, what we got to do is we got to tire him out because, ah. Oh. That's exactly why I don't like fishing. Five pound test. <sighs> See, if I'd had a drag system, he just pulled off a little bit, and then he would have re turned the other way. The reason why that bass sucks is I saw him. That was a nice sized bass. Probably three pounder, maybe. About like that long. Here. Like I said, three pounder maybe, maybe two and a half. I'm, I don't ever carry a scale, but fairly large bass. And uh, sucks now that he took my only big fly. So now the question is, let's get back to bluegill, what we originally came to. Did I leave that fly box all the way over there? You've got to be kidding me. Oh no, it's in my other pocket. Whew. I was about to say, no, I gotta walk all the way over there. All right, well, we could continue the dry fly, or we could go subsurface again. I'm thinking dry fly just because of the size that we're going after right now. And that, that put a sour taste in my mouth, losing that fish because of that. The hook set was good, otherwise we would have pulled out. And 
Yeah, that's just really frustrating. Definitely gonna put on a little bit heavier line next time we go fishing with this rod. Cause I fish with it enough now that I can say for sure, if you enjoy this kind of rod, I would definitely recommend getting it. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. It feels a lot like a mix between, it feels like I'm using my Roto with the reach of my Imago, but this rod's so much lighter that the fish feel better than they do on my Roto. Because one thing I've noticed about Tenkara USA rods is they're, they seem like they're built much more for durability versus like, um, sorry, versus, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Much more durable. I mean, granted, I have no idea how durable this rod is. I've only had it for a little while, but I've had my Tenkara USA rods for over five years now. And the only time the tips have ever broken is because I did something stupid with them. I've never had them break while fishing and I've never cleaned them once. I've never taken them out. Actually, no, that's not true. I did clean my, my, um, my Imago once. I took it saltwater fishing and I dropped it in the water. But that's it. All right, we got one on top of the water there. Little, little dry fly. Targeting bluegill now. Bluegill. Gotta get that in my head. Bluegill. But, uh, watch that big old bass come over here and eat this tiny little fly. I mean, that bass, it's also possible he cut my line because I wasn't ready for that hook set. He could have swallowed it deep, like deeper in his mouth, and it got to the, the, the hook point, the, the line was behind, his, was behind his teeth, and as soon as he did that real head heavy head shake, just snapped the line. That's a possibility too. I do not have the patience for this. I like good morning. Swam right past it. Mm. I think at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this fly. We're gonna fish this one little culvert over here. If we don't get anything, we're gonna go back to where we started, where we know we were getting a lot of bluegill because I know they're stacked up there. And we'll target them. Let's get that right there. Oop. There's generally some bluegill stacked up in this culvert. Also, generally, oh my gosh, is that a bass? What was that? Come back, where'd you go? Oh yeah, that's a bass. No, it's not. Oh, thank goodness. I look like a freaking six pound bass. That is a bass. No, it's not. Is it? Yes, it is. There's two really big bass right underneath this culvert. Not as big as when we just hooked though. There was two of them that were kind of lined up together side by side. There's the gill. That was something I was worried about with this rod. The lifting fish. Oh, you're... You know, you didn't have to do all that. I would have let you go. He's very dirty. Very little... Pretty bluegill. All right, all right. Jeez. Feisty little guy. 
Tell me how you really feel, dude. I mean, I guess he did, but... Left hand fish, let's see how this goes. There's a bass right there in the water. Can y'all see it? Y'all can't see it. There's a bass right there. Y'all see him? See if I can get closer and he gets to move and maybe you can see it. There he goes, there he goes, you see him? Not a real big one, but still cool. Let's see if we can get a... If we know we're gonna get a bluegill over here, all we have to do is drag it across the top right there. We are getting a lot of bites, but no hits. I mean, a lot of strikes, but no hits. Like I said, they're, they're hitting it. See, they're hitting it like crazy, but it's I'm about to check this fly, is the hook gone? Like for real. <laughs> no, the hook point is there. I mean, they're nailing it. They don't look like small swirls either, so it's not like tiny bluegills are hitting it. I mean, they're nailing it, and it's nothing. Look, nothing. Saw that big snapping turtle, got chased off by a bass. Look at that, I don't... I'm even waiting a second to set the hook. Maybe I won't wait a second. I'm about to get changed flies, this is ridiculous. That's it. That's ridiculous. Y'all are my witness. That was what, 15 strikes and what, three minutes? Not a single hookup? That's, that's not cool. Look, I, I don't know if maybe they're just, maybe the bristles are not, there's nothing wrong with the fly. I mean, looks pretty normal. I don't know. My line's wrapped around the... Maybe that's got something to do with it? I don't know what's going on. Look, my line is like... Coming out the side of the fly somehow. Maybe it's like unhooking them automatically? I don't know. We're going to change flies. Alright guys, we're switching to this. I think this is like, I don't know what this is called. I think it's like a Griffith snap. I don't know. I'm, I don't keep up with fly tying names. I'm a total idiot when it comes to that. I just go, oh this one looks like it looks like a bug. It's going to catch fish. And that's what I grab. And I don't remember what the package said or the box said at the fly shop when I bought it. Right, it's on top. Maybe we can get a top water strike on camera. Be nice. Big ol' swirl over there.
There we go. Look at that. See the difference it makes when your hooks work. Did we catch you earlier, bud? Hey. Hey. No reason to get an attitude. Anyway. Uh. It's not the release I wanted, but okay. So feisty, man. Try to do something nice and unhook him gently and he does nothing but give me attitude. Ooh, that was a nice gill. I missed it there. Chilling there. No, I can't see him, can you? Look, I see him. Just chilling. Mind his own business. Unlike me. Yeah, you messed up, bud. He didn't even fight until he got out of the water. He's like, what's going on? It's a nice size bluegill though. Hey, sir. Calm down. Ow. Look here, dude. You just fend me for no reason. Yeah, you broke a scale because you jumped on a rock. I'm trying to protect you. See? How bad was that? I mean, I know it started out bad, but... <sighs> that dude... Let me get his attitude checked. Again, hook set, missed the hook. Oh, he didn't miss the hook that time. Finally got you, you little turd. Come here. You and your friends been giving me a hard time for the past 10 minutes over there. Look at you, all oh, your blue. So if I was to give my review of this rod for bluegill, I would say it's a blast. I definitely want to see it get on a much bigger bluegill, but I figure we'll get there one day. I definitely do like this rod. And yeah, I definitely would use these rods again in the future. Granted, it's only been three trips. We'll find out after like a year and it breaks or something. But as of right now, I thoroughly enjoy it. dethrone my roto as my favorite rod i don't know it's getting there i can't say for sure if i would because i've had that roto for so long ow looky here nope no I'm not playing with you guys today You swallowed it. You wanted it bad, didn't you?
I didn't even hurt you much. There you go. All right, 23% battery remaining. There was a fly hand. I, I hear you. I hear you. Come here. Jeez. To say he wanted it, I think, would be an understatement. You water skiing, bud. Well guys, I'm about out of battery length, so I think we're gonna call it there. If you uh, enjoyed the video, like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, most importantly, don't forget, take it easy.